Hi, this is Paul. Uh, in the next five minutes or so, I'm going to walk you through the new GUI installer feature of Red Hat Zest Storage version 4. Um, so it's not without irony that our first thing we're going to look at is the command line. So what we can see here are four machines. They're all RHEL 8 machines. Um, in the top pane, we have um, our installer. So we have a machine that we're going to use as our installation um, mechanism. Um, and it will also be the home for the metrics that get gathered from the, the Red Hat Chef storage subsystem. And then the bottom three panes are all, again, RHEL 8 machines. And these are going to be our Red Hat Chef storage nodes. And we can see here that we have uh, each node has one terabyte uh, drives, three of them. So in order to start off the installer, um, as we can see here, we have the, the Ceph installer installed. Um, so what we want to do is just start off um, the, uh, the API for Ansible. And we do that simply by running a command. So this initiates the container and then waits for the container to actually respond. So we know the API is up. And at this point, we can switch to the GUI. The GUI is actually based on Cockpit. So Cockpit is a feature that's in RHEL 7 and in RHEL 8 and provides a plugin capability. So we have a plugin which handles the installation um, of Red Hat Ceph Storage. So we log in to Cockpit and this is what we see. Um, so we can see that the Ceph Installer plugin is available here on the left hand side. And we're going to be stepping through these six stages. Um, so let's move on. First thing is to define the environment. So what we've tried to do is make sure that there is help on the pages uh, to resolve any kind of uh, initial issues people have. Um, and when we look at the installation source, we can go straight from uh, CDN uh, when we say Red Hat, or we have access to ISO, or if you want to do a community install, then these options are also there too. For this example, we're going to do an ISO install. When we click ISO, we can see that it's already scanned the system and it's found the ISO that we're interested in. Um, I'm going to switch it into development mode, um, which relaxes some of the rules, uh, which we'll come on to later. And then everything else we're going to leave as, as default. So we can see that we're now going to be deploying an RPM-based Red Hat Ceph storage uh, system. So let's move on to hosts. So now we're going to add our hosts. So we can add hosts using a mask. So this is going to add hosts RHCS 4 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to assign them roles. So we want these three uh, hosts to be monitors and OSDs. So part of this process makes sure that the Ansible um, engine can actually talk to those machines. And if it can't, then we don't get connectivity verified. And then we, we can't really move forward until that's been fixed. Normally, that's just SSH key exchange, but all that information is, is you know, presented to you in the, the GUI. Um, another part of RHCS4 is the introduction of a Grafana and Prometheus uh, uh, system, which is integrated into the dashboard. So what we're going to do now is specify where that is going to be set up, which is the same as our Ansible host. So all, connect, all connectivity is OK. Um, the next thing we're going to do is let's put some additional services in play. So we're going to have the Redos gateway running on uh, RHCS 4.3 and an MDS primary and secondary on uh, 4.1 and 4.2. And we move on to validation. So we can see here these are our selections. Obviously, the, the Ansible um, host has actually been removed because uh, as far as the configuration checks are concerned, it's focused on what the Ceph daemons need in terms of resources. And this is the print that the, the priority on this page is just to understand whether the resources are adequate. So we're going to probe the hosts. Probe is complete. So what we can see is that this is actually in the background, it's run an Ansible playbook to have a look to see whether or not um, the machines have any particular issues. Now, earlier on, I selected development as an option. 
So we're going to relax our rules. So what would be an error and block you from installing is now just a warning. Um, but we can see here that with the specs that I have on these machines, it's really not good enough for a production-based deployment. Um, so hopefully this will help us catch um, misconfiguration or inadequate specs before we get to the point where deployment has actually started. Um, but as I said, we're in development mode, so we're allowed to continue. Now, we, uh, that probe has also determined the number of networks that are available. So this would give you the options to select which networks. So if you want to have different um, back-end and front-end networks and a different S3 client network, this is where you have those options to select from. And then this is a final sort of page before we move on to the actual deployment itself. So this gives you that point where we can sort of see what the machines are in terms of the, the cluster hosts that have been de detected, what machines are actually running on, what their configurations are, what roles we've asked them to be, to be um, as well as where the install is coming from. In this case, it's our ISO. What roles in terms of the whole cluster we're actually using. Uh, and then we get a, a summary over here on the right-hand side of whether we've got any errors or warnings uh, to do with uh, the deployment. So we're going to move on from here to deploy. Um, so this is the, the, the final sort of page. So at this point, nothing has been committed to the Ansible configuration to actually run the deployment process until we click Save. Once we click Save, then if we want to, advanced users can go and edit the normal files uh, that Ceph Ansible would use. Um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to click Save, which commits those files, and then click Deploy. And we can see that, that button now has changed to, uh, to running. And we can see that we have a breadcrumb trail, um, which follows the process of the whole install. Um, so we start off with the blue icon or the blue color. And then as each phase completes, blue transitions to green as we move from left to right. So we'll just watch these uh, complete. Okay, so as we can see, uh, the install's finished. Our breadcrumb trail has shown each of the roles have been deployed. Everything's green. And our running button has now changed to complete. So if we click the running button, sorry, the complete button, uh, we get a view of um, the current state of the cluster. So we can see that currently we're in a health warn state, uh, which is not, uh, not unexpected, given this is a test environment. Uh, we can see our roles that have been deployed. And more importantly, we can see that a link has appeared at the bottom of the list. So if we click on this hyperlink, we open the dashboard. And we've gone straight from installing in the GUI to managing uh, Red Hat Ceph storage in the GUI. Um, so that's all I wanted to show you. Hopefully it's been of interest. Thanks for listening.